Hello, and welcome to Make a Difference, creating one place space at a time. My name is Sherry Duchesne, and I'm a center educator with the Capital District Child Care Council. Good afternoon, Child Care Council, Sherry speaking. Okay, let me get some information from you. It starts with an intensive technical assistance visit. What does the environment need to make it engaging for children? And can we really do a makeover for $500? Environments for young children are so important and we need to make sure that it's something that they understand, that they can relate to, and we want to inspire creativity for young children. That's so important. What we want to do is make sure that children are actively engaged, that there's hands-on learning, and there's lots of exciting materials for them to explore in the space. One of the things that was missing in this environment was very clear, defined spaces. The children tended to gather in the middle of the room, and there were no interest areas for them to break out in small groupings. These small groupings are so important, that's where children are beginning to form friendships, where they're learning to take turns, and they spent a lot of time in a large group. One of the things I wanted to do for this space for her was to create these defined interest areas. During cho choice time, I had to get bins up from storage or out in the hallway. We didn't have shelving and the heaters were falling apart. Closet over there where the doors fell off and I let the kids play in there because they liked it. Um, it was a mess and we called it our book nook or our cozy area and it wasn't really cozy. <laughs> we're gonna go take a look inside and see how children are learning in this space. This cozy area has had a complete facelift and I'm so excited. This new cushion and fabric, we picked a really bright, bold color um, to interest children and engage them and we have a nice thick foam. And we also added this beautiful crown molding to give it a nice crisp finished edge. And we added some new baseboard molding in here as well which will help hold the carpet down that's underneath. And we have several elements of softness in this space. It's comforting for children when they come in to relax and read a book that's here. We have these great pillows, and we picked a solid color because there was already a lot going on with this print. And we have a long body pillow for relaxing back there as well too. And these have zippers on them to take off and wash. We also have some soft stuffed animals in this play space. And then behind me, there's another great element of softness. We have all these wonderful puppets, which encourage language development. As you can see now, this is really a fun, engaging, exciting place to be for a young child. The next space is just a delightful space for a young child. And it's so inviting and warm, and I wanna come in here and come to this farmer's market. We actually set this up so that there are two play schemes in here and two different roles for children to play. So we have the farmer's market set with a cash register to promote math literacy. We have this great little farm table. Once you leave the farmer's market, you can come on over to your kitchen and wash your fresh vegetables. And we have a beautiful kitchen set that is made from recycled boxes. See what's baking. Push the light on. Push, just push up on it, on the bottom. Oh my gosh, they are going to love that. <laughs> Doors open and work, and children can put things inside. I think children will have a delightful time playing here for hours. We're at the new literacy table, and this is another interesting space in the room. This space actually existed across the room. It was kind of hanging out and didn't connect to anything. And the literacy area can be kind of one of those quiet spaces where children can get away. So we included it right here in this cozy space. And this shelf actually provides a partition, so a couple children could sit here, have some quiet time and downtime, but yet still see out into the room and visit connect with their other friends. We put some uh, fresh coat of spray paint on it and gave it some new life 
And the other thing, we're in fall time right now, so we've provided a basket here and we actually set up a literacy game where children can sort according to smooth gourds or bumpy gourds. We actually have the pictures here and we have the cards labeled to promote um, literacy and letter recognition. The other thing that we added is the markers and we have the dry erase cards so children can be writing. And each child has a name card so they can sit here with their name if they need to reference something as they point out the letters in their names. The other great thing here with this basket is this is available here for the teacher. She can easily switch this game out and put some materials that are relevant to the season to encourage that vocabulary and keep building um, language development for children. This is actually a two-person spot. So many places in the room will incorporate larger groups and this is one of those two-person spots which is just nice for um, promoting friendships and to get away from the large group. So we're gonna move from this cozy, quiet, intimate space and we're gonna go into the bigger part of the classroom. Follow me. And we're gonna go into this more active play zone and this is where children can have some gross motor time and really spread out and use their imaginations. We did a couple things in this space. We took an existing shelf and we gave it some fresh life by painting it white. And this space didn't have any blocks or had some very limited amount of blocks. So we made some homemade cardboard blocks with some recycled milk containers. And we also covered them in duct tape. And we used the existing materials and displayed those on the shelves. As you notice, when we start to look at things, everything's gonna have a label. Again, this helps for children to recognize where to put things away. And it's also, again, promoting literacy because the words are on every picture. So we're gonna go over to the manipulative area. And this space flows really nice because we have the blocks and the road sets, and then we have all of the accessories here in this shelf. And this shelf, I have to say, is one of the best features in the room. This shelf was a really large, tall piece of furniture, and we were able to take one section of this off, make it child size so that we can see over visibly into the space and keep supervision of children. And then we have this huge shelf to display all these accessories to go with the blocks. Everything's labeled. We have some things in clear plastic containers, and then we also wanted to add some natural elements into this space, so we have some woven baskets and containers, just to bring in a little softness from the plastic. This space is really great because it promotes emergent writing. We took the, the shelf that we gave some fresh life to with a coat of paint, we put some blackboard paint on the back, and now we have a great little place to sit on this wooden stool, and we have a bucket full of chalk and erasers. And again, this is a place where it promotes two. We have two buckets, so we have the friends can come back here and they can be drawing and writing their names. Christy, these pictures that you took yesterday, they're fabulous, and I love how you took these outside and we have some natural light. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little project to personalize the cubby space and I have these popsicle sticks and you're gonna use the hot glue gun and we're okay. going to make some frames and you also made their names. So we're gonna personalize this and each child will have their name on their photo and this will help um, with name recognition as well too. Great, 12 more to go, right? Yeah, <laughs> excellent. We had the children involved in this makeover which is really exciting and I think when they come in and see their faces here on their cubby, they are just gonna be thrilled to see that. So we have this personalized space for children, but we also thought it was important to protect and preserve some space for the teacher. And to honor that, we brought in this desk. It's a slimline desk, so it doesn't take up a lot of space in the classroom. She can sit here at nap time and she can supervise the whole room and see everything. And she has an adult space, which is really important in a classroom, that a teacher has an adult-sized chair to be able to relax and do her work. One of the unique aspects of the design that already existed in the room were these great cubby shelves. And giving them a fresh coat of paint really transformed the space. We purposely chose simple items to put in each cubby. And the reason why we did this is that a child can easily come up, decide to take one of these trays out, and then take it to the table that's right across here. And then when they're done, they easily slide it back in. 
And then to support fine motor development, we also have all the puzzles displayed in here. And again, instead of stacking all the puzzles on top of each other, we put one puzzle in each cubby space, and then it's really easy for a child to pull it out. It's also easy for them to stand here and make a choice and decide which puzzle they would like to work on. Now we're into the creative zone and the messy zone. The existing sand and sensory table is, um, works really well because of the scale in this space and these covers pop right off for easy access for children. And one of the other unique features that we have that did not exist in this room is a place to display all the tools so that they were accessible to children. And it's important for children to be able to be independent and make these choices. And now they don't have to ask a teacher, they can come right over here, see what they need, and come on over and start digging in the sand and playing. One of the things that we did to gain some more floor space was to go vertical. Going up is always great. So we went vertical with the easel, and this is a place to um, great place to be creative and paint. We also were really purposeful in putting it next to the window. We had thought about putting it over here in the corner, but we really wanted some natural light while the children were painting, and that's going to inspire their creativity. We're going to move right into the science area. And this is an exciting space because it didn't exist before. So I think the children are going to be thrilled when they come in tomorrow and see all this natural um, exploration for them. Some of the things that we have here are some nature items. And we have some bird's nests with eggs. We also have some magnifying glasses. And also, we have some things in containers too. Up here, we have some plant life, and we actually brought this in from outside. There are actually tools for promoting fine motor development, and they can pluck the seeds right out of the sunflower. And then we move into a seed and sorting game, and we have the materials here, and then they can take a closer look as they put their materials into the container, and they have some magnifying glasses. The other thing that really is great here is to have some pictures for children to reference. So we have these cards so that children have the pictures, again, labeled with words. The teacher had a wide variety of math materials. They just didn't have a home. So what we did is we took a shelf and we mounted it onto the wall. Again, we're going vertical in this space, and that's really important to gain more floor space for the children. We have some beautiful materials here from Lakeshore to promote math learning, and we also have some homemade games for sorting and math development, and children can have fun measuring with the footprints. They're really um, a lot of fun for children to play with, and we have this great floor space, so they'll have plenty of room to line them up and spread them out. Also, we have a magnetic board and children can count and sort. They are going to be in awe. They're going to they're going to look around and try out everything. They're going to have so much fun. We're going to have so much fun. <laughs> Cuz I'm going to be down there playing with them all the time. All the different things. Okay, let's play with this one. Let's build this. <laughs> Very impressed with how quickly they were able to turn around such a big project. The kids are going to have a blast. It, was, it looks like a great time. I'm going to have a blast myself. During that time, I might hit up that chalkboard. They had a little art center. They had a kitchen area. They redid their little clubhouse cubby area, so to speak, with the pillows. My one little daughter loves it. She had her three, two or three of the little friends in there with her, so it was really, really great. Oh, that cozy reading corner. Oh my goodness. It's like she, she'll probably spend the whole day in there. She absolutely loves it. When I saw that cubby, the first thing I thought of was how happy the kids are going to be. The chalkboard on the back is like, who would think that that would be there? It just kind of, it was such a surprise when I saw that, you know, it, it's just wonderful. For the kids, the kids, I, I cannot wait till tomorrow morning now just to see those children, what they're going to do. It's the best thing for the kids. You're here to make a difference in these kids' lives, all of them. They, they need to have an area like this so that they can really grow. It's gonna be so wonderful. 
creativity, collaboration, and imagination, spaces can be magically transformed for children. You too can make a difference. If you're interested in learning some inspiring ideas for your own spaces, contact us at the Capital District Child.